Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to combine two 24 by 36 DIY tabletops together to make one big massive surface. And it's easier than you think. In case you missed it, we've already built one 24 by 36 table in a previous video. I suggest you guys go watch that first because we're gonna be going over a lot of those same details when we build this one. We offer many different sizes to fit your needs. Building your own fixture table can be a challenge, especially when it comes to sourcing and drilling the steel plate. That's where our DIY kits come in. Each kit includes a precision milled half inch plate steel with dragon scale for durability, making the toughest part of your table build a breeze. This lets you focus on designing and building your own frame and legs, keeping costs low while achieving professional results. These DIY tables have a special plate fastening system that isolates the plate from the frame. This now allows you to build a sloppy frame and have the top plate remain flat. I think it would be fun to show you how to combine two 36 by 24 inch tables today and walk you through the process. First thing we're gonna need is a set of sawhorses or a flat floor. So because we're gonna be combining two surfaces together, we're gonna wanna give ourselves a really flat surface to start with. And how do you do that if you don't have one? Well, we're gonna make ourselves one. We're gonna do it with one by two tubing and we're gonna make a triangle. You do look down your material and make sure that they are bowed curving down but all of these are straight, I've already checked them. So what we wanna do is just make sure the tips are the right elevation. This is just some scrap material. We're gonna be able to cut it apart when we're done with it, so we're not wasting anything here. All right, now what we have here is a perfectly flat surface, believe it or not. That whole system right here. So whatever we wanna do with it, we could lay stringers across it, we could do two by fours, or in our case, I'm not gonna do anything, just like that. That's perfectly flat, so now whatever I do to this, we can get it level and straight. Okay, what we need to do now is bring in our plates. Even like that, <laughs> that's pretty good. Triangles are amazing. Okay, so now we have a nice aligned piece of plate steel. We don't have pieces that we're trying to float and shim underneath here. It's all sitting pretty good. So now what we need to do is get them spaced evenly. These plates are cut undersized so that they can be combined. So there's gonna be a little gap in between the plates. And why is that important? Well, we want accurate hole to hole centers. So what we're gonna do is use these. Once again, we're gonna use fence blocks. We're gonna use them to set the plate distance. There we go, one more in the middle. Okay, so as you can see here, see how they swing a little bit, right? Because there's a little bit of gap inside there. So what we wanna make sure is the plates are straight. You can do that with a level or a straight edge, just like that. So now we're gapped appropriately and in line with each other. Now we're ready to start building our frame. I'm gonna be using our provided frame kit. It's optional. We're not gonna use the short pieces that would normally go in here for the individual tables. We are gonna use the rest of them that go on the intermediate. What you also wanna be aware of is all this material may not be perfectly straight. I might have a, a crown or a dish to it, right? So in this instance, I can see when I push down the end, that it's, this end comes up. So it's shaped like a smiley face right now. What I wanna make sure is happen is I want it down this way. I want the center to be low because it's much easier to get calibrated this way instead of the other direction. So take a look at all your pieces. All right, there's all those cross members. The kit normally comes with short pieces like that for an individual table. We're not gonna be using those. So you're gonna have to cut your own. And this is gonna be cut at 45 inches. One there. Ta -da. Okay, we can tap it around in a minute. And from here, it's just like how we did the single. I'm gonna put the straps on here to locate everything. Okay, leave them loose so they can slide things around. We gotta put everyone in. All the clips are on, but everything's kind of sloppy. See how they're all loose? Just like the single table, we're gonna use the fence block and we're gonna line it up. And then we're gonna snug the clip down. Remember, you don't need a reef on it. Make sure they're all centered up. Go around the entire table. And you gotta make sure that the endos are lined up. There you go. So we got everything snugged up. Now we can level this plate because everything's kind of locked together. How do I look this way? Looks like the nose needs to come up a little bit. All we need to do is just shim it around a little bit. I'm just gonna use some paper. We're just gonna wedge the frame all the way back up. The only reason why we're doing this is so that we can just double check ourselves with the level as we put the legs on. Maybe just a skosh up, probably live with that. Okay, so now that we're sitting level, what I'd like to do is tack the frame on the insides and all the corners, and that will prep us ready for the legs. So as of right now, we can do a couple things. I can come back and weld these in, or I can save that for a little bit later. But since I already have the welder in my hand, I'm just gonna put a little bead right here on the tops of these tubes. All right, those eight welds are done. 
So it's time for legs. This is the three by three angle iron that comes in our leg kit for a one table. So what I've done is I've also cut it short because I want this to be a sitting table. And now it's time to install it. It's gonna be the exact same way that we've done in the previous video when doing the single table. We already have our foot welded on like before. We can put the leg on the outside of the tube, on the inside of the tube, but those kind of encroach the hole a little bit. So I like to put it right here in the center. But now that we have it all tacked together, I can remove these corner clips in preparation to use the three axis square. You can use a level if you want, but that's the slow way. So I'm gonna cheat. Once again, use the three axis square. This is gonna center everything up. A couple shims, give me the offset I need. Once again, we're ready to go. Once again, I like to weld only on the inside because I think it looks cleaner. Simple, we tack away. And we're gonna do this all the way around. Okay, done. That took me about four minutes to do each leg in about a minute way faster than using the level. Thank you, three axis square. So it's time for leg braces. These are the pieces of angle iron that come in the kit. Because we've added two tables together, obviously these pieces aren't gonna be the correct length. So what do we do? Well, we can repurpose some of them for maybe this short section right here, or we can come up with something more special. So what I think I'd like to do is do a H pattern leg brace. And I have some scrap one by one square tubing that I think is gonna be perfect for this. I think it's the right length. So I'm gonna save this angle iron for another project and I can get my little H pattern out of this. I think this is gonna look nice. Here's our piece of tubing. Left a little short to avoid the roll on the inside of the angle iron, right? Give ourselves a little wiggle room there. And I think the optimum height for this is about 10 inches again. That way we can hang clamps and stuff off the side of it. I don't know if you guys have seen these yet. These are the new auto locking mantis grip pliers. And I really like them, especially if we're going all over the place, different material thicknesses, especially when you're by yourself. You don't have anybody holding on to something for you. And since I'm gonna be welding on the inside, short leg, where you're gonna be welding, because if it's flipped around, like a regular set of pliers, look what you gotta now work around, the big old arm. Flip it around like that. That looks good. Tack it. Okay, another thing to make sure you confirm, the spacing inside here is okay. 26 and three eighths. So I'm off about a 16th of an inch. I need to move the leg just a little bit. I'm just gonna use a little wedge. I'm going for perfection. I want the top and the base to be identical. It's pretty close. I think I could probably live with that. Let's tack away. Looks good. We're gonna do the same to the other side. All right, it's time to put our center piece in here. Our legs could be tipped like that or like this, even though they're the same, right? We could have a parallelogram. We just need to make sure they're square. So once again, I'm just gonna use a fireball square and I can see obviously there's a little tack there. It looks good. And you can always confirm with the level, which we are also good. And now after all that, I can finally take a measurement right here. 41, 13 sixteenths. Okay. So we got our center bar all in here, held in by the mega square and the mutant square, keeping everything nice and tight. And now I'm just gonna tack it up, a little downhillers and good to go. Weld it out. It's at this moment of time that you schedule an appointment with the organic mechanic <laughs> and lift this thing off. Much more helpful if you have two people, but we're dumb and we're gonna do it all by ourselves. There she be. Pretty cool. I'm gonna weld down the fillets and avoid welding the tops because I don't want to have to come back through here and grind them all. Okay, it's at this point. We just need to make sure we don't have any spatter or BBs anywhere. Get them cleaned off so that we're ready for paint. After you've finished removing the weld beads from your table frame, you can now decide on the final look for your professional table. In the previous video, I started by cleaning the metal surface. You can use mineral spirits, acetone, paint thinner, or brake cleaner to wipe off any dirt or grease from the surface. With the metal cleaned, you can send it to get powder coated, or you can paint it yourself. For my application, I applied a gray primer to seal the surface and ensure the paint stays. Once the primer has dried, you can choose any paint color you want for your table. Once that's done, you're now ready to combine the table surfaces. Frame all painted, now it's the fun part. Wow, that's looking really nice. Kind of digging the black. All right, now the fun. You gotta put all those clips back on, along with all these little grub screws that go in the hole. So all this will be done in three, two, one, go. 
Got all our little clips and grub screws in. Took a few minutes, but now the plates are kind of floating on the frame. Nothing's been tightened up underneath, as you can see. See these clips, they're loose. You wanna leave them like this, because what we need to do now is get these two plates shifted correctly and get it kind of centered on the frame so it's sitting pretty neutral. We also need to worry about the hole to hole distance right here in the center. And that's also why we're gonna be using the fence blocks again. And I kind of have a couple of them spaced across the table here. But as you can see, if I can twist these blocks there's a good example. See how there's a gap there now between these two plates and this block obviously isn't sitting square to the edge. So we need to get everything calibrated. A good level works, but even a precision straight edge is gonna get you just that much closer. Get it all centered up on your frame and all the plates dialed in. It might take a little tweaking, but do a good job on this step because it's gonna really pay dividends when you're done. Now that you have the plate centered on the frame, we can work on getting the plate sitting flat. The problem is the frame you just welded together is most likely bent, warped, or twisted, and that's okay. But if we put the plates on top of this twisted frame and strap it down, the plates will also be twisted. The good news is we've included a solution to this problem. We've provided grub screws. This allows isolation between the plate and frame and a way to calibrate it. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna use these little grub screws right here. And when you drive these things down, it pushes directly right on top of our frame rail underneath of there. And these are our shims. So as of right now, the plates are sitting neutral on the frame. I'm gonna use this level, but not as a level, as a straight edge. And this will be a reference for calibrating this table take our level and we're going to chew everything up with no straps hooked to it or anything. So we're gonna just look across. This plate is a little low, so I'm gonna just raise this up and just by touching it, just like that. And I'm gonna just kind of go along and anywhere the grub screw's high, I'm just gonna run it down. This is gonna give us a starting point. If there's any low spots in our frame, we have now shimmed to it. I'm just using my fingertips on the key to lightly tighten it because you could really jack the plate up if you over crank. All right, so now we're gonna start probably in the center here. And I can feel with my fingers that this plate is higher than this one. So I'm going to just crank the screw up. It's adjacent to it just a little bit until I can see it and feel it. This one's low, see, that's all you need to do. Look at the level, maybe just a little bit more. Yep, that looks pretty good. All our blocks are moving in and out nicely. And now I'm just gonna go from one edge to the other, just looking at it. We're looking pretty good, straight, straight, straight. And then of course this way, we're looking straight, straight, straight. Okay, so everybody put level running in a grid, we look great. So now looking at diagonal, I can see that I'm crowned in the middle. And then when I go this direction, I'm bowed in the middle. So that tells me is we have twist in our frame. So diagonals, we're taking out with the frame twist with the feet and plate flatness we're taking care of with our grub screws. So right now, since we're dished in the middle, we can just pick a leg and we just go down on it. And hopefully you're in the, sit the position that you want. And I'm just gonna watch the level. As I'm watching the table, I can see it flattened out. And there we go. So we've taken some of the flex out of the frame. That's how you do it. So diagonal, you're doing with the feet. Across the plates, you're doing with the screws. And overall, that looks pretty good. Go back over one more time, make sure everything's touching. Because as you adjust one, these ones lift up, right? So we just wanna make sure they're all touching the frame underneath. Done. Double check that our plate is straight and our blocks go from hole to hole. And now we can come back with our 5 16 hex and snug up the straps. Like I said, they just need to be lightly snugged up. They don't need to be ridiculous. I'm gonna remind you guys, don't use an impact. Don't use a drill. Just lightly hand torque each of these. If you start to see the foot deflecting on the strap, stop. We go all the way around the table and we're done. I got everything snugged up. Now that I notice is the plate is kind of dipping down a little bit right here. So I wanna make an adjustment. The first thing everybody wants to do is grab the screw and start cranking on it, right? To raise the plate up. You gotta make sure you loosen the strap underneath of that because here's what happens. Don't make an adjustment with the strap tight. You hear that? That's bad. If you hear that noise, stop what you're doing. You're just stretching the strap, all right? So make sure that you're loose before you make any adjustments. Because remember, the purpose of the strap is just to hold the plate down. We're gonna go across here. Okay, that little bit of adjustment is all I need. So this is a little low. See the level move a little bit, right? And I'm just gonna turn it real lightly till I see it stop. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Snug this back up again. Plate shouldn't be making any funny noises. Done. 
Okay, final touches, little end caps, 3D printed. You can find these on the website. You can print them yourself, or like I said, you probably could have filled this before. Look at that, that looks just like a clip. Doesn't that look good? I like that. You're gonna do this in those four corners. Perfect. Let's give her a quick clean up. It's almost too pretty to use. Job well done. That looks pretty cool. What a nice looking table. Can you believe that? We built this right here in that shop. Ready to go to work. All right, let's take a look here. This thing turned out pretty awesome. Ah, oh, yes, that 34 inches is perfect once again for sitting standing. This is a really great size. I really like it. And it wasn't really that bad to be able to combine two plates together. I think you guys can do this at home. This is pretty easy, actually. Having these nice flat plates really help things dial in in a frame that you can weld warped and still get professional results, I think this is pretty awesome. The dragon scale on the top, is gonna protect this steel from any of your spatter so you don't have to clean it up all the time. But other than that, I think this is a great option if you're looking for something in this table size and you want it flat. If you guys have any more questions on building this DIY table, I'd be happy to answer them for you at the Fireball Forum. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one.